interview, you were asked if, uh, while campaigning, you envision yourself in the Oval Office, and you said, not really, but I think it's a possibility. So that begs the question about your path and when you will give an honest answer about perhaps your third-party plans going forward. Are you in this regardless of the outcome to your right here on this stage? Well, unlike others, maybe they sit around and daydream about being in the White House. I just don't sit around daydreaming about it. But I'm in a race. I'm in a good race. You and you talk about electability. Uh, why don't we take on the first three states and take everybody 30 years and under? I'm doing pretty darn well. I'm winning that vote. But what about if you compare my name to Obama? Uh, I do quite well, if not better, th than the rest. So uh, to say that there has only been three, three races and talk about n not being electable, I think is, is a bit of a stretch. Matter of fact, the, delega the delegates haven't even been appointed in Iowa yet. And quite frankly, we have a pretty good chance of getting a good sum of, of, of those because of the organization. We only had a straw vote. I mean, this argument on who won, it, it was a straw vote. I mean, the delegates is what, what, what counts. So, but I do want to address the earlier uh, uh, discussion that you had about 1997. I had been out of the Congress for 12 years, and I went back in 96 and, and, and arrived there in 97. It was chaotic, let me tell you. It was a mess, and it was a mess for 12 years. And Newt had a big job on his hand, but he really had to attack the conservatives, and he did it boldly. And uh, quite frankly, I think the reason he, he did not not run for speaker you know, you know uh, two years later, he didn't have the votes. That was what the problem was. So this idea that he voluntarily reneged and he was going to punish himself because we didn't do well in the election, that's just not the way it was. Let me come at it this way. If Newt Gingrich emerges, emerges from the GOP primary process as the uh, nominee of the party, do you go your own way? Well, I've done a lot of that in my lifetime. <laughs> uh, I, should, I should be more specific. Will you run as a third-party candidate? Uh, I have no plans to do that, no intention, and uh, when I've been pressed on it and they ask me why, and I said I don't want to, but uh, I haven't been an absolutist. Uh, when I left Congress, I didn't have many plans on going back, but uh, I did after 12 years. I went back to medicine. So, no, uh, I don't have any, any plans to do that, no. Would you support a new Gingrich as nominee of the GOP? Well, you, you know, he keeps hinting about uh, attacking the Fed, and he talks about gold. Now, if I could just change him on foreign policy, we might be able to talk business. <laughs> Speaker Gingrich, you willing to adjust to pick up an, a, uh, an endorsement from Texas? Well, I got one on Friday from Governor Perry, which I liked a lot uh, as a starting point. So I like endorsements from Texas. Uh, and and uh, Congressman Paul is right. There, there's an area, I think, what he has said about the Federal Reserve and what he has said about the importance of monetary policy, the proposal I've issued for a gold commission, which harkens back to something that he and Jesse Helms helped develop and which he served on in 1981, uh, and the fact that we have people of the caliber of, of Lou Lehrman and Jim Grant who have agreed they would chair such a commission, I think there are areas we can work on. There are places we disagree very deeply. Iran is a good example. But there are places, you know, you build a coalition by trying to find ways you can work together. And frankly, we could work together a lot more than either one of us could work with Barack Obama. Uh, Governor Romney, a question you know is coming because of what you